Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Agile IT Tech Talk. I'm your host, Sean Spicer, and today we're going to talk about stopping email storms in Microsoft Exchange. If you've never been part of a reply all cascade, an email storm, a reply all apocalypse, bless your heart, sweet summer child. You're one of the most fortunate people on the Internet. What an email storm is, is when somebody sends a message out to an abnormally large distribution group and then someone replies all. So accidentally send out an email to 30,000 people. Somebody replies and says, hey, remove me from this list. Now you've got 60,000 emails that have been generated. The next person replies and it's 60, 120,000, 24,000. It gets ridiculous quick. If you're a user and you're watching this video right now, here's what you do. Mute the conversation, set up a rule to delete it, don't reply, you only make it worse. Thankfully, in Microsoft Exchange, there are tools that allow you to control it and they're enabled by default. Now, the defaults may be a little bit too lenient and what we're gonna walk through today is real quickly how to connect to Exchange Online with PowerShell and how to adjust the controls or the settings for reply all storm protection in Exchange. So let's get started. Let's get into the computer. And here we are, now we're in PowerShell. Notice that I am in PowerShell as an administrator. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger to make it easier to see. And I just hit control and use the scroll wheel. The first thing we wanna do, if you've never connected to Exchange Online Management, we need to go ahead and install the Exchange Online Management module. So don't worry, I'm gonna have all of these controls in the description. Now, I've already installed it. On your first install, it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna install from an untrusted repository? Go ahead and click yes, it's Microsoft, it's fine. The next thing we wanna do for security and features sake, if it's your first time installing it, is to go ahead and update it. And that just takes a few seconds. Sometimes you'll get a little download prompt, but usually it's so fast you won't see it. The next thing we wanna do is import it so we can use it in PowerShell. And then we want to connect to Exchange Online. Now, I'm already signed in as my global admin in my demo environment. So I'm not gonna get challenged for a password probably. Let's see. You'll know it's successful when you get the prompt without any red text. There we go, now we're in. So let's go ahead and look at the transport config for the reply all storm setting. Let's see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the transport config, pipe it into a list for reply all storm. It's gonna give us all of our settings. You'll see that it is enabled. We have our minimum recipients set to 2,500. The minimum replies set to 10 and the duration hours of a block set to six. Let's go ahead and go through all of these settings one by one. The first thing we wanna do and you really don't want to do this, but just so you understand how to do it, we're going to go ahead and turn it off. Let's look at that setting. We can see now that reply all storm protection enabled is false. Let's go ahead and fix that. And then let's go ahead and change the um, uh, minimum recipients from 2,500 to 1,000. Now, you can't set this lower than 1,000. That's the minimum. So if you're in a small company and you wanna set it up that nobody can reply all to the whole company, this isn't the tool to do it. Now, what we wanna also do is go ahead and change the minimum amount of replies to seven. Now, mind you, that seems like a low number, but that's 7,000 emails with our current settings. And finally, let's go ahead and change the reply all storm uh, block duration hours to 10 hours. Now, I think this duration of six is silly because if you're working in a multi-time zone office, you can come in and have one and reply all. You're going to get the block kicks, but then people are going to be getting off work later in the day and they're going to pass that six hours. So let's go ahead and set that to 10 and then we'll go back and we will check our settings. And here you can see now we've dropped our minimum recipients to 1000. We've dropped our minimum replies to seven and the duration hours of a block to 10. 
The last thing we want to do is disconnect from Exchange Online. You always want to close your session. Um, they do not close on your own when you close PowerShell. There we go. And we are off. We have changed the settings for the Reply All Storm Protection functionality. And that's how you do it. I hope this has been helpful. Before we go, I just want to bring up a really funny incident that occurred uh, when the New York Times, I think it was back in 2009, uh, had an email storm and they put an article in their website when I mistakenly put on an email chain, should I hit reply all asking to be removed? The only content of the article was the word no, linking to the advice I gave earlier in this video, which is don't reply, mute it, turn it off, make a rule to get out of there. Don't contribute to the email storm. Thanks a lot. I hope this was helpful and have a great day.